my name is Brian Casey and we are here at RSNA 2022 with Dr. Emmanuel Canal. He is a, a professor of radiology at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. He is also director of MRI services and director of emergency radiology there. Dr. Canal, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So uh, we talk about different uh, interesting aspects of MRI uh, over the years and one of the things that you've encountered recently is this concept of remote MRI scanning. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we have, um, I think it's really since COVID, we've had a pretty severe shortage of technologists, short of lots of employees, but technologists especially, CT and MR especially. And um, some of these manufacturers have come up with the concept of being able to remotely access your MR scanner for service and remotely mm -hmm. access for maintenance, why not remotely drive the MR scanner? And so these the, are functions that usually there's a technologist in the room doing this. Absolutely. Interesting. So they now have the ability to remotely control the MR scanner and actually plug in the, the parameters that we'll be using for scanning, enabling the scan, gathering the data, reformatting the data, doing whatever a technologist does from the scanning point of view, although they're not physically at the site. So the site will still need to obviously have someone there to prevent anyone from going to the room that shouldn't be there if the patient has a contrast reaction or if they squeeze the, the, the panic ball, if they have an mm -hmm. issue, someone can go in. But the expertise for scanning is all concentrated in one area and then can be, I like to think of it as democratized. You can distribute, mm. pe people have difficult studies, for example, a cardiac study. They may not have access to a technologist that has expertise in cardiac mm -hmm. imaging. So this centralized resource now may allow you to have expertise, not just in MR scanning, but in MR scanning of all subspecialty areas mm. that you can have available in whatever your, wherever your site is located. So, so where would these technologists be located if they're not on site? They can be located remotely at any location where they mm -hmm. choose to centralize them. For example, some of these are the MR manufacturers are offering the service mm -hmm. so that the manufacturer of the equipment says, nobody knows my equipment better than my own personnel. Mm -hmm. They have their own employees that they then can offer as a service that will scan your patients for you. Interesting. And, and then that works for the site because that enables them to do more sophisticated scanning protocols that they might not have access to previously. Ordinarily, I would say that's a fantastic benefit, but it's not just that. It may work for the site if the site can't today even retain sufficient numbers of technologists mm -hmm. just to do even routine scanning. You have access to a centralized resource. Although. I, I did recently submit an article specifically trying to make certain that we didn't overlook the safety aspects of it. Mm -hmm. There must be oversight of the safety of the patient being scanned as well as oversight of the, the site itself and site access restriction and all the things that we normally have to do. But if it's done in a prospective, thoughtful fashion, it's not that I believe it can be done. I. I believe it's an inevitability. Mm. The technology has just enabled something we weren't able to do just five, ten years ago. Wow, and now you have a paper that you've submitted on this. I have a paper I've submitted on, I think I called it remote MR scanning, doing it right every time. Interesting. All right, well, we'll look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Dr. Cannell, thanks for being with us. Truly my pleasure. Signing off from RSNA 2022, my name is Brian Casey.